guys. Turn her on. My first favorite feature about to come on. Look at that. Oh, I think that's so fancy. Oh yes. But check this out. When you press this button, watch what happens here. Now you might go, okay, cool, whatever. I've seen digital displays do that before. This is not digital. Look, this is actually a physical speedometer and you can move it back and forth. So I think that is pretty freaking cool. Like it's got glass over the top of it, but it's got a physical round thing in here that actually moves, which is cool. This peeps is the brand new Lexus LC500, but it's the first ever convertible. Guys, welcome to the Supercar Blondie channel. You might be wondering what on earth is a Lexus doing here? There's a very simple reason for that. I saw this car on the road when I was driving and I was like, damn, that car is good looking. I have to review this car. Like, I don't know what you guys think, your initial impression, but for me, I was like, woohoo! This car is sexy. This Lexus has a naturally aspirated V8 engine, you guys. There are no turbochargers inside. It's not a hybrid. This is probably one of the last naturally aspirated V8s we're gonna see, and that's what makes it so exciting, along with another few features in here that I'm gonna show you. So, should we hear it? Let's just first put it in Sports Plus mode. So here's the mode shifter over here, which is in a very different position to where it normally is in cars. Uh, we're just gonna flick it once, Sports Plus. Okay, and now we're gonna hear how this baby sounds. Go check it out. It sounds so good, you guys. What do you reckon? It is a unique sound. Now, one of the best sounding cars, in my opinion, is the Lexus LFA. I drove that in Sydney, Australia. It just screams at you like an F1 car. It really does that ah, scream. I was like, what? This is like a little baby LFA. This has the unique sound that you don't get from any other car like it is unique to Lexus uh, but it's like a little baby scream does that make sense <laughs> all right now let me show you this of course it is a convertible so this is a really important feature you've got this little cubby hole here and you push that down and you pop that up and this reveals the toggles for the roof so here we go we'll pop this, this down and it's quick it doesn't in 15 seconds You've actually got a button here that will wind down all the windows at once. So press this and boom, they all come down, which I love. Now, that's that. Now you come in here, you push this. This will reveal a little spot. So you've got your rego here. Now what's nice is you push this and it goes automatically back into place. I like that feature. This is the how you control the infotainment screen. Uh, I know lots of people have been poo-pooing this, uh, so I've been playing around with it today to see if it is actually as difficult as people say. It's not ideal, let's put it that way. It's like a mouse pad, so you don't really know how far across you need to scroll to get to something unless you're actually looking at the screen. If you have buttons, you know, okay, I toggle it once up, toggle it once down, you know it's just gonna move to the next you know, thing on the display. They do have a tune button here, so you do have a little scrolly function, which is good. And you've also got the seat track, so you can actually push this up and down to control certain things. This right here is a beautiful. That is such a weird thing to say, but it feels like butter. 
it feels so smooth on your fingers. It's like so fancy. I actually really, really love the interior of this car. Can we just appreciate the beautiful detail of this seat right here? Look at this stitching. Come on, this is beautiful. It's like a butterfly. It's like a butterfly has spread its wings and this is the detail on its wings. I love, love, love. I also really love this dash here. So this is one long piece of glass. It's not cut up into different pieces. And what it reminds me of is actually a Rolls Royce. Um, in that you have a real clock face here and you also have a display here that is actually meant to just look like artwork. This is quite a nice door handle. It's like a fancy butter knife. That's what came to mind. I don't know if it's strange, but it's nice. So we're going to open up. My next favorite feature is this, peeps. We'll close this off. This is the key to the LC500. It's in a nice little design. I like that. It's like a little wave. Now, what's cool is this. You can either lock the door by just pressing the door lock button, right? It goes in. Or what you can do is this. You can do it manually. Push this in and this little light pops up green light to show you that the car is now locked now I really really like that feature because I always get out of the car with my handbag right I'll show you what I do okay I get up get out with my handbag and I'm like okay I gotta lock the car All right oh god where's the key oh god where's the key too long did I leave too it long. in there what if you could just lock it right from the door? Well, that's the amazing thing. You don't even need to find the key. You just have the key in your bag and you go boom, bam, off we go. My car is locked and I love that feature and I feel like more cars should have that feature. It's just such a tiny thing, but great. All right, so there we go. Now, what I want to do now is show you the exterior and part of that is the headlights. So let me turn on the car again. There we go. Yeah. Oh yeah. Actually, to be fair, I love the entire design of this car. The entire design. I love it. I think it looks sexy, sexy, sexy. Shout out to Tadao Mori for actually designing something this epic. That is awesome. And a shout out to Philip Klein, by the way, for giving me some cool kicks. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Love it. I like how the indicator light runs down the car instead of along the side of the car. That's a really unusual feature. I really like that. And also here they've got a nice little design, the pattern within the headlights that I like. Do you see that? All these little details that I really appreciate in this car. Nice big Lexus grille at the front. A lot of presents around here. You've got these nice 21 inch wheels. These are forged aluminium wheels. And around the back, just grab the key again. The key, the key. Oh no, it's in my bag. Oh, this is what I'm talking about. Oh, I'll see you in about five days when I find it. Several days later. Ah, magic. Here we go. Right, around the back. Just show you your boot space. Here we go. What is it with me and buttons, honestly? I bet you come and do it and oh there we go yay it opened here we go only a little space here because of course you've got uh, a lot of space dedicated to the convertible top that has to go in and kind of in this space here so not great amount of space but hey do you really need it probably not close this now what's cool is there's a secret button here look if you can't find your key or something it's in your bag you press this boom it pops open i like my secret buttons all right now in the passenger seat this is cool look at this <laughs> ah! <laughs> they are some epic handles look at this on both sides in what car do you get handles like this prominent and this big that's lexus going yes you can drive this on the track baby now this is like a it does have four seats but does it really have four seats? I mean, seriously, like I can only just get 
my hand behind this seat here. So this is super impractical. The last super impractical back seats I saw was in the Ferrari Roma. They were also super, super tight. <laughs> I have to pull my neck over in order to sit in the back. I honestly don't even know if you'd ever use them. So that's gonna be handbag space for me, maybe golf club space for you, Nick, or whatever you guys wanna use. It's definitely not for sitting in. Now, how much does a sporty Lexus like this go for? The starting price is a hundred thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money, right? When you think of Lexus, you go, ah, oh, probably not going to cost a hundred thousand dollars. It does. Now you think, okay, well, what other two seater sports car could I get for the same amount? You could actually get a Porsche 911. Now for me, I love the look of this car, but the Lexus brand doesn't have the prestige like a Porsche does. If you see a Porsche badge, you go, that's a beautiful car, that must be expensive. You see this car, you go, that's freaking cool looking, don't think it would be $100,000. So that's really where I feel like it's a little bit, mm, what would you do? I'd probably still go for the Porsche because with this car and the Porsche, you still have like the luxurious interior in both of the cars. The Porsche is a little bit quicker, zero to 100 than this one. This one is 4.7 seconds, zero to 100. The Porsche 911 is just over four seconds. So it's a little bit quicker. However, with this car, you get the naturally aspirated V8 and you get that roaring sound from the engine, which is very nice. The Porsche, you know, it's a flat six with turbochargers. So they're completely different engines. So it really depends on what you prefer. But for me, just with the whole prestige element, I would probably still go for the Porsche, which is actually a real shame to say because I really appreciate this car and I really appreciate the design. When we see more and more cool sports cars or something, lots more cooler cars coming from Lexus and the kind of brand prestige is elevated to kind of sports car level, then I think that will be a more difficult decision between Porsche and Lexus. But for now, I still think like, mm, eh. So let's get in, take it for a drive, see what this EA can actually do, yeah? How it feels. There's something cool in this car called Climate Concierge. Now, the reason why I'm not actually gonna show you this on the screen is because the infotainment system is so bad. I can't actually find it. I'm not gonna put the time in to try and find it. So Climate Concierge is something cool where you can set the temperature to a certain degree and then the car will just make sure that whether or not you've got the windows down, the roof down, the roof up, whatever, that it's always that temperature in the cabin. Anyways, so this is how you put it into gear. Now, this is a bit finicky for me. I'm not loving this gear shifter. This is where I'm struggling a little bit. It's just not like, it's like, okay, you go and look, that doesn't do anything. And you see, oh, so you go drive, drive, drive. <laughs> <laughs> it's not great it's not great it's very finicky um yeah not my favorite all right but anyway so let's get it in reverse okay good now decent camera wait is it in sports yes, it is. It's got a top speed of 270 kilometers an hour that's actually capped it's limited at 270. oh there's a bunny bunny you better get off the road mate come check out the Lexus, huh? It's so, it's so funny, these bunnies are always at the roundabout here. They're looked after by a local hotel, so don't worry. I started freaking out first. I'm like, I need to rescue them all. Ooh. Yeah, it is a fun car. It's rear wheel drive, so I did feel it like come out a little bit at the back then when I went around the corner. I like the drive, it's very smooth. I feel comfortable, it feels sporty. I'm just not that taken with how the speed, like how quick it is. I feel like it could be zippier. Um, and I also feel like you could get a lot more sound from that engine. I'm a little bit disappointed on the sound levels. But if you want just kind of more of a, like a, a cruiser, I feel like this is, quite a nice option for you. Alright, what do you guys reckon? Thoughts? Yes? No? Maybe? 
What do you think? Pop your comments in below the video, guys, and I'm going to be reading through them. I love you guys. Thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you so much to Lexus for uh, giving me this car to play around with today. I appreciate you guys, and congratulations on such a beautiful design. Love it. Bye. I'm out.